She's got a secret underneath Yeah, she's his naughty little freak She likes to put on a show She likes when he tastes good We welcome you to Soldier Field in Chicago on the lakefront of Michigan. And we welcome you also to the 209th meeting all time between the Packers and Bears. Obviously, anytime we play the Bears, we want to get that win. We talked about all week. We knew it was going to be a full quarter battle. Here's the snap. Love looking, fires middle. Yes! Touchdown! A free down for Green Bay because the Bears couldn't get their people off. Jordan Love emulating his mentor, Aaron Rodgers. Sees that he's got 12 guys on the field. Love threads the needle. Woo! Williams takes, hands it off to Swift, and he's met in the backfield. Hammered down by Brenton Cox. And it's a 7-3 game as Santos delivers Bears score some points on their opening drive. The Packers are really coming off the ball with energy. I think Christian Watson does a great job. We want to obviously get him involved. Snap to Jordan Love. He looks around. He waits. Still looking. Still waiting. Fires oh, left yeah. side. Christian Watson's got it. Jay Love trusting me. Only thing going through my mind is just got to find a way to make it. So right before halftime, the Bears take the lead over the Packers. No matter what's happened, whether good or bad, he continues to fight and be resilient. The moment's never too big for him. Here's the snap, the fake to Jacobs. Love throws it, left side. Yes. Kristen Watson's got it inside the 10 down the left sideline. Here's the handoff to Jacobs. Left there the middle, go. touchdown Green Bay Packers. Here's what we got. Chicago up 19-14, 4.17 to go. Green Bay's got the ball in Jordan Love's hands. Right there, you know, fourth quarter, you've got to have a play. Somebody's got to go out there and make a play. Here's the handoff. Jacob slashing his way, shredding the defense. Down he goes near the 42-yard line. Snip to Love. Deep drop. Looks, flings it. Left side, yes. down they grab, Christian Watson, 45, he's to the 50, down the left side of the 40, to the 30, cuts it back. Phenomenal play, phenomenal catch by Christian, I'm proud of what he bought out. What a play for 60 yards! It's low. Steps away from Christian, right on the run, he might get there, Love chucking for the end zone, got him near the end zone, is he in? No, down at the one. In these critical games, you got to... Gonna lay it all in the run right there. Jordan Love pushed forward to the end zone for the touchdown. Talk about displaying toughness for your team. I absolutely love that leadership from him. So here's the situation, folks. We have a one-point ball game. The Packers leading 20 to 19. They've done some good things today. Let's see how that young defense responds. And stepping up, looking to throw. And yes. down the play, so written right. down. A tackle made by T.J. Slayton. And a loss of one. Rushes on again. Williams and Goff again. And he's sacked for the second play in a row. Williams and Goff get that on the left side. Up for his right throw. Oh, it's a big catch. 43, game on the line. Williams lost him one for a deep job. The game comes down to the toe of Cairo Santos. We saw what happened in the Kansas City game, Denver game. Can't take anything for granted. You have to be resilient. Not everything's always going to go your way. And you've got to keep battling. Keep battling, keep battling, keep battling. The kick is blocked! Ah, it is blocked! Blocked! It is blocked! And the Packers have won! Beautiful! It is beautiful! It comes up short, and the Packers... Have won 11 straight over the Bears. Feel good, man. Come on. Go back home, baby. Rich said to our team last night, I will not understand if we come out of this game without a block. Williams takes, hands it off to Swift, and he's met in the backfield. Hammered down by Brenton Cox.
I was really happy with his play and happy for him, and hopefully he'll continue to grow as a player. But I think it all starts with his approach, how he attacks it. You know, he's had to earn everything he's gotten up to this point, but I, I am excited about him and just there's going to be more out there for him. For Green Bay's defense, a tall task awaits in the NFC's top-ranked offense, led by 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy. Number 13 can make plays on the move, evading D linemen to deliver strikes. He can tuck it and run too, and Purdy did just that on Sunday, recording his team leading fourth rushing score. He's, in for the touchdown. He's also thrown for 13, with more than half of those touchdown passes finding his top target, George Kittle. The all pro tight end has reeled in seven receiving scores to rank top three in the NFL be it highlight grabs in the back corner of the end zone or creating just enough space at the goal line and out-muscling safeties for six. Throws into traffic, Kittle makes the catch. And while the 49ers are coming off a last-minute loss to their division rivals, for the Packers, it's about building off a thrilling fourth-quarter comeback victory over the Chicago Bears. Oh my goodness, the Packers block it! That's this league. A lot of these games are going down to the final drive. So you better stay resilient. You better keep fighting. You're going to get a whole 60 minutes from the Game Bay Packers. It's great. So having a unit like that, that's still striving for uh, you know, greatness and uh, perfection, and having a game that's not perfect still end up in the way that we want to, just show you're going to play a whole 60 minutes. Man. Welcome back. This one-on-one -on -one is brought to you by Brew Pub. Lots of matzo pizza. All in all, what'd you take out of your first significant playing time as an NFL pro? When in doubt, just keep going. You never know when your opportunity is coming. You make the most of it. Bang! Williams is hit and sacked. Brenton Cox is making his presence felt. That had to be so cool. Caleb Williams does his fake and he turns around and smack. You're right, his girl's head. Was that just a terrific football moment for you? Yeah, just don't miss the layup. Just <laughs> <laughs> don't miss it. Just wrap, wrap them up, drive your legs, and get them to the ground. On that play, all the action's going away from you. And they're counting on Brenton chasing that action, but you did not chase the action whatsoever. Why not? I've seen this play before. Um, everybody goes away, some got to come back. And, you know, that was a perfect time to just take my shot and try to make the play. Williams takes hands it off the slip, and he's hammered down by Brenton Cox. Let me ask you this, Brenton. When it comes to football, are you all serious business? Yeah, and, you know, I've been like that for a while. Growing up playing basketball and football, always been the one in the back and just vibing to the music. But I always want to let my play speak for me. Just try to you know, make splash plays and be the loudest one on the field when it's time for action. Look out for the side by Cox. Coming up as an undrafted free agent, can you tell us about your journey and what it's been like? It's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, just powering through a lot of adversity and just keeping your head down and working been my main priority and just staying in touch with my family, keeping everybody close to me and just staying positive. Brenton, you just went through your first real chance, come out of it with first sack, first TFL. What's next for Brenton Cox? Being a better teammate, being there for my brothers, and you know, doing the most I can, doing my 111. This week, I asked Matt LaFleur how Sean Ryan was doing. He said he just played his best game as a Green Bay Packer. Sean's whole card is his ability to move people. He's got the strength to move big NFL people off the ball consistently. Here he's working with Josh Myers on the combo block and when Sean takes it over, he drives and drives and drives some more. And it's a nice, clean read for Josh Jacobs. And he goes right up the gut for eight yards. Another thing about Sean's game, if he's supposed to help his buddy, his buddy can count on that help. 
Here he's working with Zach Tom, and Sean makes sure they have that defensive tackle under control and moving backwards before he starts looking for the linebacker. And I gotta tell you, there's not many offensive linemen who can come off with that kind of authority and still stay on their feet, find their linebacker, and get them blocked, just like Sean Ryan is doing. Another clean read for Josh Jacobs, and this time he went up the gut for nine yards. I got a combo block. I don't want, you know, my center and my tackle second guessing because then that slows them down and then that kind of throws everything off. So it's like, I expect, I trust you to be there for me and I, I want you to trust me that I'll be there for you so that we can just go out there and play and, and root guys out of there. Of course, no matter what you do in the running game, you gotta be able to pass protect in the NFL. And this is as tough as it gets. Sean Ryan is on an island. No help, nowhere, strictly one-on-one. -on -one. And did I mention he's going against the Bears' leading sacker? Now I have. But Sean Ryan uses his hands, keeps moving his feet, and gives Jordan Love room to step up. And this little swing pass is going to go for 23 yards. Now watch Jaden Reed fly into your screen. He can be on my offensive line anytime. Sean's in his third year. He's played a lot, and it's showing. Here he's doing another good job of one-on-one -on -one pass protection, but he just feels something ain't right. The Bears have an unblocked linebacker coming free. So Sean just reacts as a football player and somehow, some way, gets a piece of the guy. And instead of picking himself up off the ground, Jordan Love is finding Josh Jacobs for a gain of eight on first and 10. Sean Ryan is one of those guys. The more you see, the more you like. I love Sean. He's gonna give everything he's got. Uh, he's a physical, tough kid. Um, and he's continued to grow mentally throughout his three years here. And I think it's starting to click a little bit more, playing a little faster, playing with a little more confidence in him. But he is a strong son of a gun now. When he puts his hands on you, you know, he's punched me a few times. And uh, I, I've definitely felt it. So I'm happy for him. And I want to continue to push himself to get better every day. When you look at the tape of the 49ers defense, and in particular their defensive line, what do you see? Yeah, well, uh, they play extremely hard. Um, they get off on the snap count really well. Um, you know, their linebackers are fast. Uh, they all can move. They play physical. It's, uh, it's a very good defense. Are you surprised they're 5-5? Five and five? Uh, Yeah, a bit, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, you know, I, I can see how it happens, um, you know, with the, the league just being as competitive as it is. Um, but... It's a, it's a good good football team and a very good defense. As far as your offense, uh, how do you feel things are coming together? Uh, good, good. Um, you know, I think we uh, keep growing and, you know, uh, keep moving forward, keep taking steps in the right direction, and um, feel really good about it. At 5-5, five and five, uh, 49ers, you know, I mean, it's kind of crunch time at this point in the season. You know you're going to get a pretty solid upper, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know that organization has a ton of pride, and there's no doubt. Yeah, we'll get we'll get their best swing, no question. Josh, First, Jordan was just saying that Sunday was the best he's felt moving around since week one. Um, how much does that open things up for the offense when he's able to create all the schedule like he was? Yeah, I mean, I think it's huge. You know, I think you could kind of see it Sunday. You know, it's it's super helpful, uh, and you know, for him, some of his some of his biggest plays are, are on those plays, you know, and, and what he's able to do when he gets out of the pocket. So it's great to great to have him moving great again. Four hours have been something of a playoff nemesis for you guys the last several years. How much motivation is it for you guys to make it drop them below 500 and go a long way to keep them out of the playoffs? Um, yeah, uh, they, they definitely have. I mean, I think regardless, um, Regardless of that, you know, I think we're just motivated to keep winning, you know, more than anything. Um, you know, there's definitely, obviously, yeah, they have knocked us out quite a bit. So there is that extra motivation behind it. But, you know, at this point, we're just trying to churn out wins. Josh, 
Josh, some things in football are, just end up being 50-50, like fumbles over time. They say over time you'll probably recover about half of them that are on the ground. But when it comes to close games, you guys have won a lot more than you've lost in terms of close games. Is that something that progresses to the mean over time? Or is there something your team does or has within its character that allows you to come out on top time and time again? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, uh, I mean, I think it definitely speaks to the character of our team. You know, I think the best teams uh, find a way to win those games. And, you know, we've been, we've been doing that as of late. So just have to, to keep doing that. And, you know, hopefully not, not be so close all the time, you know, pull away from some. Josh, has been noon game, noon game, noon game. Now suddenly it's 325 and night games and a very different schedule coming up, including yeah. some kind of a condensed schedule with the next few games. Does that play on your mind? Does that play on your body at all? Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it plays on the, the body as much as it does like game day. I know I hate, personally, I hate night games. Um, and that's solely because I just hate sitting around all day, man. I'm sick of it uh, by the time game time comes around. So that's just me. Uh, but, yeah, it'll be a little different, but I think it will be great. What do you do at the start of the day when you have a late afternoon game or evening game? How do you kind of keep yourself occupied knowing? Yeah, uh, yeah, I try not to. See, I feel like I get exhausted if I sit there and think about it all day, you know, because I, I, I used to do that early in my career where I just – it's all I think about. And I can't do that anymore. I just am so tired by the time the game starts. So I'll watch a movie, take a nap, have some meetings, just kind of in and out of it and try and – just try and relax. This is an obvious question, but how much better are you guys when 23 is on the field? Um, a lot better. Um, obviously, he provides uh, – you know, he adds a lot to our team. He adds a lot to our defense. Um, but, I mean, we, we understand, like, he's injured. So, um, you know, he has to do, you know, he's going to do the things that he has to do to try to get back. Um, and then the guys that are behind him always know how to be prepared. I think I've been saying this from the, from the very jump. Um, like, everybody has to be, you know, on their P's and Q's because you, you never know when you're going to get called. And, um, I think, you know, our guys here have done a great job of uh, just making sure that, that they're always ready. And uh, I think it's shown, um, you know, a lot about our, our unit as a secondary and a lot about our team. So, uh, yeah. How is his day-to-day -day involvement in everything, even when he is battling through some of these things? Yeah, he's still, like, is in the meetings. He's still uh, communicating with everybody, um, still, you know, giving out. Like, he's still watching film and still trying to see – you know, ways where he can, you know, help us, you know, play, go out there and play better and um, just giving us different keys here and there. Um, so he's been great, man. He, he's he's going to be Ja uh, all the time. So his, his, you know, his character never changes. Um, you know, he's always has that energetic energy that we need. And um, it's, be, it's good for all of us. They say you are what your record is. Mm -hmm. The record's only five and five. Does that not hold true with them? Or are they a little better than the record? For sure. Um, obviously, they're, they're a team that's played in big games. Uh, they got a lot of big time players on their team and uh, they know how to play ball. So um, obviously, like, there's always a lot of different factors that, that go into the seasons and different things that can happen during the season. But, um, you know, they're still a very good football team. They're still a dangerous football team. And uh, not only do we know that, I think everybody else around the league knows that. Um, so, yeah. Do you recall watching the divisional game last year at home uh, and thinking how close this team was to, to beat the Niners last year? Yeah, I actually didn't watch the game last year. Um, but, I mean, we talk about it here. Like, ever since I got here, I think one of the first meetings that I was in here, um, we had a conversation about, you know, the Niners, um, you know, beating us. Uh, so I understand how important it is, and uh, we all do. And, um, yeah. How much emphasis is on finishing because obviously this team, how close they were there and what the Lions experienced against them. Yeah. This is a team that you really have to kill them because they're not going to, they're not going to. Uh, yeah, they ain't going to back down. Yeah, they ain't going to back down for nothing uh, or nobody. And uh, I think, you know, they go out there and show that. Um, they have a certain mentality that they play with. And um, they got a certain group of guys that, um, you know, they, they're not just going to lay down. Uh, I don't think they have the, those type of guys that do those things. And, uh, they, you know, they play hard regardless of, you know, what their record is and regardless of what's going on. And, um, you know, you can see it with how they play. So uh, we understand that. And we just, um, you know, we got to go out there uh, with the right mindset. When did you start start watching Purdy film, and what, what have you seen there? Uh, I've been watching them really since um, 
I think the last or whenever he really got hot, like whenever he really got going in his career, um, I've been kind of paying attention to him here and there. Uh, but he's a guy that can improvise on his feet. He's smart. Uh, he makes great checks. Um, you know, he usually keeps the ball inside. Uh, a lot of his throws are really on the inside, the inside part of the field. Um, but he's a really good quarterback, and uh, I think he got guys around him that make him even better. And obviously, I think he's got a great scheme around him too. So uh, it's a lot of different factors, but uh, he's a good quarterback. Do you hear sense from a lot of these guys talking about the importance of beating the Niners? How much last year's divisional loss hurt? Um, you said, do I get a sense? Do you get the sense from some of the guys when talking about, you know, the importance of beating the Niners, from the guys that were here last year? Uh, do you get the sense that that one could hurt some of these guys? Oh, for sure. Um, I definitely think it hurt, you know, the, the people that were here. And, um, yeah, man, like, any, I think any time you lose a big-time game like that, and the way it was also, uh, obviously you're going to be uh, feeling a certain type of way. So, um, yeah, I do get that sense. They're really good in time of possession. When you play a team like that, how important is it to not let them just stay out there and keep doing what they want to do offensively? Yeah, I think that's super important. Um, obviously, when you when you when, when you're able to have the ball longer than the opposing team, um, it works out well, you know, better for you. Um, and I think it's super important for this team to kind of be able to get off the field as quick as we can, and not just be out there and you know creating these long drives and. You know, letting them have the ball for a long, long period of, periods of time. Um, so I think that's going to be super important in this game, and uh, I think that's something that we're emphasizing. Bags, this is a Jordan Love question, but when a quarterback can create off schedule like he was doing against the Bears, and he said it's the best he's felt doing that this season, um, how difficult is that for a defense to, to defend against? Yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, it's super difficult um, at times. Um, you know, when you when throwing throws are off schedule because like, you got plaster rules, uh, you got to be able to, to once you get a man, you got to stay on that man. And you can't you can't you know start looking around because if you do, somebody gonna pop open. I think they do a great job of that. Like a lot of their guys know like okay, this this throw might be you know off rhythm throw, and they'll start pivoting and start doing different things to kind of get them open. And um, they do a great job of just getting open for him and, and you know kind of getting back into his field of vision, and uh, he's able to make those throws, and uh, yeah. How much of a boost was it to have Evan, you know, back in the secondary and just being able to work with him? It was good. Um, you know, I think having him back adds a tremendous, a tremendous value to, you know, our team and to our defense and to the back end as a unit. So uh, it was just good to have him back and uh, have everybody kind of, you know, back into that, that fluent motion and getting everybody back going. What do you think is possible for this offense when you're able to move around? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, we're a really good offense regardless. Um, but I think, uh, obviously, just being able to move around, make plays outside of the, you know, on-schedule plays um, is definitely a big part of our offense. And uh, I think when we can do that, we, we have more explosive plays that we're capable of. But um, I think we're a good offense regardless. Is that the best you felt doing that kind of stuff since we've won? Mm -hmm. yeah. It looked like. This was the most that you've taken the check downs this season through the football away a couple of times. How much has you over the bye put a, a conservative effort on taking the easy stuff when it is available? Um, I mean, I think I think that's always kind of um, part of this offense and just reading the plays out. But I think a big part of it was uh, that's kind of what the defense was giving us this week. Um, you know, I think they're doing a good job trying to take away some of the deeper stuff, and um, and obviously we're getting some pretty big gains just taking the the check downs, and um, whether that's running back breaking a tackle or making a guy miss. I mean, I, there was some some big ops there, so um, I think a little of that just played in the way they were playing us. Does the game feel easier for you when you have more of those opportunities to dump the ball down and take the thing underneath yardage? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it. Those are the easy throws, right? Um, but I think it does help open some stuff up when you do take those and uh, take them quick. And now they got to respect both of that. What are they going to? Are they going to stay deep and take away the deep stuff, or are they going to come up and try and take away the check down? So, um, you know, I think, like I said before, it's kind of just playing off what the defense is doing, what their game plan is for that day. Um, but like I said, I think that's what Chicago is trying to do. How similar or different is this 49ers team from the last time you met them? They're pretty similar. Um, I think new defense coordinator over there, um, but a lot of the similar faces, um, especially in the back end. Jordan, this, uh, this offense has been among the league leaders all year in team explosive plays. Just uh, how are you guys so good? At, like, what, what, what makes you guys good at, at getting those explosive plays? Well, I mean, I think uh, it's something that we focus on throughout the week. You know, that's a, a key part of 
um, kind of our identity on offense is to go out there and, and get those explosive plays, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. Um, and I think it's just credit to the playmakers we got. You know, I think we got a lot of guys who um, are really good when they get the ball in their hands that can make people miss and uh, kind of just they go hunt those big plays. So um, I think it's all about the guys we got in this locker room. Chris, you should be a breakout game Sunday. Just what kind of difference has it made having him available just about every week this season? Uh, it's huge. Um, you know, obviously that's something that uh, we've been trying to do is to keep him healthy and uh, something that he's been working on a good amount, did a good amount of stuff this offseason. Um, but, yeah, I mean, anytime you have all your guys healthy, especially Christian Watson, who is, uh, you know, one of the more faster guys in the NFL, um, it, it's, it's huge. Jordan, I, with athletes, it's always easy to kind of flush a bad game down the toilet and go on to the next one. But when you have a game like last year against the Niners and you have the whole offseason, does it linger with you, or I guess how does it bother you? And that, how long did that hangover last before you're able to kind of move on? Yeah, no, I think uh, just ending the season, you know, getting to the playoffs and um, you know being knocked out by the 49ers. I mean, any whoever it would have been, you know, that that game is definitely going to sit with you, and uh, you know that's what you got to you know kind of just sit with all off season um, is going back watching that game, kind of trying to see what you could have done better, what you could have done differently in that game. So um, it definitely sits with you through the off season and then obviously move on. But uh, yeah, just knowing that that's the team that knocked us out, um, you know, we're definitely hungry for this game. Yeah, does this game mean any more, um, A, because of that game, but B, you know, the playoff contention, it's a rivalry and all that, because it's just, just, just another game for us? No, definitely. I mean, just having that, you know, them, them being the team that knocked us out last year um, definitely plays a factor. But uh, at the end of the day, like you said, NFC, um, opponent, and uh, obviously, um, we've had a lot of you know since I've been here, we've had a lot of games against the Niners. So, um, want to go out there and get this win. How many times up? did you rewatch that game like this offseason? Yeah, I watched it a couple. I, I can't put it in, probably like three, um, honestly. But uh, it's one of those games that, like I said, it just sits with you. Um, and, and no matter who it was, you know, what I mean, you're gonna you're gonna sit and reflect on what you could have done better uh, to get over that hump. Jordan, did, why, why, why'd you do that? Why'd you that? watch it that many times? Why did you feel like that was important? I don't think it was any more than I would have watched uh, any game. You know, you, you kind of just go back and there's little things you pick up, maybe watch it one time, and there's other things you pick up the more you watch it. So uh, just keep reflecting on it. But um, So not obsessing about how it turned out? Right? No, not obsessing about it. Um, I think it was kind of just any other game. But at the same time, it's, it's all you got. That's what you finish the season on. So um, you want to go back and, um, you know, kind of – see things that you ended the season on with and things you're trying to correct going into the next season. What did you didn't necessarily watch? What was that? Did you have a takeaway from, from the game? For the third time, yeah. Um, nothing more than I probably did the first time, you know. I think the main takeaway is it sucks losing, obviously, getting knocked out in the playoffs. Um, and, uh, you know, there's going to be things that we see, I think plays that we'll see, things that they did on defense that, um, you know, gave us gave us fits and uh, things that we did well. So uh, just building on that for this week. In what ways have you grown as a player since that game? Yeah, um, you know, I think I grew a lot throughout that whole season. And um, obviously, I think I was proud of the way I played. Um, obviously, uh, you know, two turnovers in that game, critical mistakes. Um, you know, the, the final two-minute drive situation to go win, um, having a turnover. So just learning from that situation, um, you know, put myself back in that situation. What would I have done differently? Um, how do I grow from that? Um, things like that. Going off those last questions, uh, did you get singing up? Or did you even watch the NFC Championship game then? Or were you like, what were you able to sit down, even though thinking about how close you guys were to be in that game? No, yeah, I watched those games. Yeah, yeah I watched them. You said you watched that more than game about three times during the offseason. Did you watch it any more than any of the other games from last season when you were doing your preparation in the offseason? Um, no. Um, I think, uh, especially when we get back for OTAs, we do a, um, you know, the coaches do a good job of just putting kind of clips together of plays and throughout the whole season of things we need to focus on and get better at. But um, I don't think that game in particular I watched any more than um, other games. I know you had the pick Sunday, but I, I thought from a decision-making standpoint, which obviously your coaches have to stress on the picks, this seemed like as close to last year back half in the decision-making as, as we've seen this season. Did it feel that way to you Sunday? Yeah, definitely looking back on it, um, you know, like you said, other than the interception, um, you know, I think I, I made pretty good decisions, um, you know, try to play smart with the ball and uh, definitely was a, a focus going into that game to, um, 
you know, be deliberate in that and uh, take care of the ball. Is that connected to the fact that you felt better than you have since week one? The, the, the mental side, the decision making, is that connected to the to feeling good physically? I don't think the the mental aspect of just knowing where to go with the ball, things like that. I don't think that played a factor in um, you know my health. Um, but like I said before, it was kind of just taking what the defense gives us, kind of trying to pick them apart and what they're trying to do for the, the game and uh, find ways to take advantage of that. In what ways is the offense working on the red zone right now? That's been a place that the team has struggled. Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, it, it's tough. I think it's a lot of just looking at what we've been doing, um, what defense have been, have been doing to try and stop us and um, just trying to find better plays, find out what we can do better, um, you know, what I can do better to uh, get us in that end zone and get over this kind of the lulls we're having in the red zone right now. Do you feel like it's a hump that the team just needs to get over? Um, I definitely think it's something that's, that's fixable. Um, you know, I think you look last year, I think we were a lot better in the red zone. And uh, whether that's just the plays we were, we were drawing up, um, whether we were just finding better options versus what the defenses are doing, um, or just coming down to making those plays that um, we not we might not be making right now. But, um, you know, I'm not concerned about it. I think it's something that um, we will fix uh, going forward, um, but it definitely hasn't been up to the standard we're trying to have it at. Now that you've been able to put, you know, just more games together, just how more chemistry, how much more connected do you feel with some of these guys? Because, like, even Christian after the game just felt like, you know, that relationship is growing. Just, I guess, where do you feel this, you know, kind of that relationship is going with the offense right now? No, it's been good. It's something that you build on every week, but um, I always feel like I have a great connection with these guys, all the receivers in here. It's something that we've been building, um, you know, over the past couple of years. Um, but like I said, I mean, just, just getting everybody more involved and, and the more reps we can get together, the better the connection is, the better the communication is, understanding where we're going to be. Um, but I mean, I think our, our, our connections all been pretty good. Wasn't surprised to have Magoo back up there today? Yeah, no, it's awesome. Um, that's, that's our guy right there. Um, obviously, he's back in the receiver room, not in the quarterback room, but uh, it's definitely Great to have him back. He's not a receiver, but it, it sure looks like the past few weeks your connection with Jacobs out of the backfield has been a, a lot better maybe mm -hmm. than, than early in the season. What's the process been like of getting on the same page with him, especially in the passing game? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said before, he's one of those guys that you want to have the ball in his hands. Um, he, he does really good things when he has it. Um, and I think it just comes down to, uh, like I said before, what defenses are doing. You know, um, I'm always trying to be aggressive and, and take those shots down the field. And sometimes, uh, especially last week, I think they did a good job of just trying to get underneath that stuff. And anytime we can get the ball in Josh's hands with, you know, five yards b between him and the next defender, um, good things are going to happen. So I'm um, just trying to keep getting him the ball. Um, but, I mean, he makes you right when you give him the ball. Is it any different learning a running target than it is learning a receiver? And, and why do you think that has clicked, especially in the last month? Um, yeah, no, I think uh, I think it's different. And you know, I think receiver. I mean, usually check downs, you you have a feel of where those guys are going to be at. Um, and uh, obviously, the deeper routes are, you know, that connection is a little, little tougher. So I don't think it's it's hard. It's just. Uh, you know, being on the same page. Obviously, um, this is year one here for Josh in the offense, and I feel we have a, a ton of different terminology and things where the backs are on different routes. So just uh, being on the same page with that, he does a great job, you know, being in the backfield with me, just communicating with what route he might be on because uh, there's so many different nuances where one single route a receiver's running might change his route. So um, just communicating, let me know where he's going to be at is, has been huge. Jordan, what is it about Fred Warner? Is it his athleticism or is it ability to diagnose an offense and what do you have to do at quarterback to compete against the guy? Yeah, I think uh, with Fred, it's definitely his uh, athleticism. Um, obviously, I think he, he does a great job at, like you said, dissecting plays and he, he's usually in the right spot, um, but he's a guy that, that flies around the field. Um, he's an aggressive player. He tackles well. Um, so there's just not a lot of things that he doesn't do well, but he's, he's really just a, a great athlete out there and he's all over the place. Well, the guy like that, do you have you think about your eyes or think about emotion or something like that? Does that come during the week of preparation? How to plan for it? No, definitely. And I think, uh, you know, their whole defense does a good job of trying to read the quarterback, read his eyes, and um, play off that. So um, with this defense, you've got to be great with your eyes. Uh, obviously, great with the timing of passes because uh, they do a good job of um, just reading you and getting in those passing lanes. So um, got to be great and uh, try and move guys around. Jordan, going back to what you said earlier, since the opener. So in what ways did that change the way you play? Were your throwing mechanics better? Were you not thinking at all about the limitations? In what ways did it help you? Because 
you just you look different than mm -hmm. you had in the previous weeks? Mm, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, you know, um, I, I'd say maybe moving around. Um, you know, I definitely felt more comfortable getting out of the pocket, things like that, um, even just running and uh, on some of the scrambles. But um, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, mechanic-wise, um, you know, I've been trying, even being hurt, been trying to, you know, stick with my fundamentals, keeping my feet in the ground, things like that. Um, but I'd say more just being on the run, things like that. Are you attempting that run to the pylon in previous weeks, given what you were dealing with? Or is, is, the, is your brain still saying, the hell with it, I'm going for it, or no? No, I would probably, I mean, if it was there, yeah, I'd probably run. Um, if I if I was given the opportunity, who knows what speed I would have got up to, but uh, I would have definitely probably tried it. Just, I mean, I, when I'm out there, I'm kind of just playing and, and reacting to things. So um, I'm not really trying to limit, if I'm dealing with injury, limit myself in that aspect. And, and, and when you lower your shoulder, are you thinking, I have to lower my non-throwing shoulder, or is that also not, is that just where, where the play was? Yeah, it's just where the play was. You know, I'm just playing at that point. Um, you know, I, I try not to think about, I mean, I don't even know if you really can think about all that stuff in the uh, heat of the moment right there. I think it just react, it just comes back down to playing football. Two more, Bajor. Two more looks at it. Do you think you got in first time? You know, I felt like I was getting over the pylon, but I definitely watching it on the field, seeing that angle that the rest were seeing, um, where the pylon cam was, you couldn't tell. Um, you know, I was over the top of the pylon, so you couldn't really tell. So, um, you know, I think they, they, they ruled it the right way. Um, but, yeah. On the 60 or Watson, you got hit pretty hard on that, didn't you? On the final two minute drive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how do you stand in the pocket and, and not flinch? Like, if one of these guys are kind of come, come at me, I'm going to talk for self preservation, right? But I mean, you didn't flinch. I know it's, it's part of the job description, but how do you, is that natural? Do you have to train yourself? How do you hang in there in, in those kind of moments? I mean, I think that's another thing. Just, I mean, obviously, you don't train that in practice. You're not getting hit. So it's one of those things when the, when the game comes on, you just got to sit in there. You know, you know you're going to take a hit. Um, you know, O-line's doing a great job of trying to keep me clean and buy as much time as possible. But, um, you know, these guys are good on the D-line. And, um, you know, sometimes you're going to take a couple hits. But, um, yeah, you just got to focus on trying to lock in on that receiver and, and put the ball where you're going to put it because we always say you're going to get hit anyway. So uh, you might as well throw a good ball. Is some of that just natural, though, Jordan, or, or – or not? I mean, you have to, did you get better at that? I guess I'm just curious about the, the mental part of that. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, it is kind of mental, but I think, you know, just years of playing football, um, I think you get better at it. But like I said, it's hard to train. I mean, you don't, in the offseason, it's not like you're, you've got a guy running at you, hitting you while you're <laughs> throwing. So a little of it is just, you know, just playing quarterback and knowing that you're going to take some hits. You know, you got to be that guy to be able to sit in the pocket and deliver the ball. Bill was an offensive lineman, so he was the one letting his quarterback. <laughs> I, I did never throw a lookout block in my life, but you know. <laughs>I always feel like I have a great connection with these guys, all the receivers in here. It's something that we've been building, you know, over the past couple of years, just getting everybody more involved and the more reps we can get together, the better the connection is, the better the communication is, understanding where we're going to be. Fires middle. Yes. Touchdown. You know, that's a key part of kind of our identity on offense is to go out there and, and get those explosive plays, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. And I think it's just credit to the playmakers we got. You know, I think we got a lot of guys who um, are really good when they get the ball in their hands that can make people miss. They go hunt those big plays. So um, I think it's all about the guys we got in this locker room. Meanwhile, the visiting locker room will feature a top 10 defense that can punish the passer and quite literally wreck the game. San Francisco has already forced 16 takeaways through its first 10 games. They're just really sound, they're really physical. They got elite players on every level. I think, and like I showed the team today, Fred Warner's an animal. And I think it all starts with him. And just his relentless attack of the football. It's very rare that you see somebody that can punch and tackle and take the ball away like at a rate he does. With Fred, it's definitely his athleticism. He does a great job at dissecting plays. and He's usually in the right spot, but he's a guy that, that flies around the field. He's an aggressive player. He tackles well. There's just not a lot of things that he doesn't do well, but he's, he's really just a, a great athlete out there, and he's all over the place. Well, this isn't a divisional duel. Make no mistake, Sunday's clash with San Francisco is considered a rivalry game for Jordan Love and the Packers. NFC opponent and uh, obviously you know since I've been here we've had a lot of games against the Niners so just knowing that that's the team that knocked us out um, you know we're definitely hungry for this game we shouldn't be scared 
you, you said it, that they're playing very mediocre. And it is surprising because we know what the 49ers are capable of doing. But I think that the way they're going to kind of set this thing straight with the 49ers, the Packers, they're going to run the ball. And I think this is where they're going to utilize Josh Jacob and what he's been doing. He has been crushing it. He's going to take these dudes to school. And I, and I really love what these guys have really done, especially on the run scheme. They have been so dominant. You know, running the ball is not just about controlling the clock. It's dominance, and I think that's how they're going to assert their dominance in this team. And I know the 49ers have a really good defense, but it's it's very interesting when I watch the Packers and you look at them on film and you see that the way they use schemes, the way they schematically try to create distance and open up lanes, the offensive line up front, they have just been pushing dudes around. When you watch that, there's a reason why Josh Jacob has been the most explosive or one of the most explosive players when it comes to run the run game. He's had so many explosive runs, and I think we're going to see that again in this game. I like the Packers to really just punch it to the 49ers and keep, get them below uh, 500. You know, I like everything that Peter said. I, I like the fact that he talked about how it just looks a little – it just looks a little rough right now over there in San Francisco, and he identified one person, Jawan Jennings, as probably being the lone star there um, for the San Francisco 49ers. And I, I think I like to make an argument that – Jawan Jennings, out of everybody on that 49ers offense, is the only one that has consistently been there with Brock Purdy. And there's no surprise, it's no surprise to me why that connection seems to be the only connection that's been working for the San Francisco 49ers. You think about Christian McCaffrey. This is just his third year, uh, his third week back from being on IR. You look at Debo Samuel and that connection with Brock Purdy, that's been a little off. And you start to think about, well, Debo's been in and out a little bit. George Kittle was out last week. So you, you can go down the list. Ricky Pearsall was out for a while. Um, Trent Williams is, is on and off the field. And when you have all of these guys, and that's not even considering the IR squad, their whole IR squad could yeah. beat a lot of active squads today. <laughs> um, you think about what they have and what they're dealing with. Um, not only do they not have a lot of their pieces, but the pieces that are there that are constantly going in and out, you're not, you're not able to create that relationship and that chemistry that we've been so used to seeing for the past few years. And I know earlier in the year during the preseason, I said that this San Francisco 49ers team does not look the same. And I got a lot of heat from it from a lot of family members, but I think we can sit here at week 11, week 12, whatever it is, and all agree that this isn't the same San Francisco 49ers team that we've been used to seeing under Kyle Shanahan. And, you know, a lot has to do with – their history and, and, and how, how, how many miles this, this San Francisco 49ers train has on them. Mm -hmm. But then also, the guys, have, they have a lot of guys out, you know, and, 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 and it's hard to put together a championship team when you don't have all your pieces. So um, this is going to be a big challenge for them on, on, on Sunday, going on with going against a very healthy Jordan Love who looks very different. 49ers head east this week, trying to find some rhythm after falling back to 500 via a gut punch. The Seahawks, with a last-minute drive from Geno Smith, keep their playoff hopes alive. A road win in Santa Clara. They get a Green Bay squad who just delivered a Packers punch, winners of five of their last six now. Oh, my goodness, the Packers block it, and they're going to win! So both teams went down to the wire week 11. Green Bay, the one riding momentum. Jordan Love didn't throw much last week, but when he did, he drank Dos Equis. 13 for 17, over 260 yards. That's over 15 yards per attempt, a rating over 110. A-plus throw here on that back shoulder. He does not face a rattled defense by any means, though. San Francisco played Seattle well until the last drive when they didn't have Nick Bosa. It made a big difference. They haven't been good on third down in 2024, middle of the pack in points per game allowed, but Love is battling a 49ers secondary that held Geno Smith to 221 yards, no touchdowns, one pick, a low 80s rate, their rate allowed for the year sub-80. Smith uses his legs to keep it alive. Let's it go. It is intercepted. He threw it right to him. Isaac Yadam the pick. Now, they did give up 110 plus yards to Jackson Smith and Jigba, held Tyler Lockett in check, DK 70 yards, Green Bay's Jaden Reed 23 yards in a TD last week, Romeo Dobbs 17 yards, Christian Watson was the receiver of the week. They take turns 150 yards. 
Christian Watson came down with it. Double coverage didn't matter. And Josh Jacobs out of the backfield racked up 58 receiving yards. It's a cool block on the outside for Sims. Room to roll. Jacobs into Bears territory. All of which was made easier when Love can stand around and wait. One sack taken last week. Packers, fewest sacks taken for the year. He's got really good protection. If Bosa plays, that's a beefy matchup. He had one and a half sacks last week. Leonard Floyd, one and a half as well. Smith in trouble. Smith is sacked. Bosa and Floyd combining. 49ers rush defense held Kenneth Walker to under four a carry, their fifth toughest against backs this season. Kenneth Walker dropped by Malik Mustafa. Jacobs hit for 4.2 a carry last week, a touchdown 76 yards, 75 plus rushing yards, four straight games now. First down and more for Josh Jacobs. Green Bay's defense will get tested along the ground too. CMC with his best 2024 showing as a runner last week, 4.2 a carry, 79 yards in his second game back. McCaffrey as a first down run to begin this drive. And Brock Purdy has to be accounted for. A touchdown, 40 yards on Ada Scamper versus Seattle. One on one to the pylon, a dive! He is in for the touchdown! Packers let Caleb Williams get away for 70 yards in their win. Gave up 5.1 a run to DeAndre Swift, 71 yards in a TD. Stopping the run, not their specialty this season. Oh, Purdy does not come in with as much swag as a passer. 159 yards under six yards per attempt, a touchdown. He got picked off a sub 90 rate. Clean pocket, tipped in the air and intercepted. Really hurt that he didn't have George Kittle. Maybe he finally had enough of that old lady and went to her house to take her crazy puffs. His absence hurt their offense. Have to wait and see if he makes it back. They're 0-2 without him this year. McCaffrey, 27 receiving yards versus the Seahawks. Debo held to 22. First game he's been under 60 in three outings. Juwan Jennings starred week 11, 91 yards and a touchdown. Back-to-back 90-yard -back games for Jennings. Career year going for the fourth year man and never more important than he is right now. Green Bay didn't really struggle with any Bears pass catchers. They gave up 231 yards to Caleb Williams, a mid-90s rate, but no touchdowns. Green Bay holding quarterbacks to a sub-90 rate for 2024. A bit of a risky throw over the middle of the field. Pack served up three plates of saccharoni and cheese versus Chicago, averaging two and a half plates a game. He is dropped. Purdy taken down two plus times, three straight games now. Purdy is sacked from behind by Draymond Jones. When these two get together, it's always an afternoon delight. Is that right? She's up 38-34-1 and one versus San Francisco. These are the fun ones. The deep cuts. 1974. John Hadle versus Tom Owen and Norm Sneed. None of them with over 125 yards passing. No touchdowns. Three interceptions combined. It was a gem. Two Green Bay field goals in the first half, one San Francisco touchdown in the fourth quarter, 7-6 beauty. Hey everybody, it's three guys with three things, and Mike, you're up. Well, Larry, the last three times the Green Bay Packers and San Francisco 49ers have met, those games have been decided by a grand total of eight points, and every game has come down to the final possession. Last week, the 49ers gave up the game-winning points to the Seattle Seahawks with 12 seconds on the clock, and of course the Packers got the game-winning field goal block in Chicago on the final play of the game. I guess what I'm saying is, Count me surprised if this game on Sunday at Lambeau is decided in 59 minutes or less. All right, Wes. Larry, I don't know if Christian Watson has ever met Jordy Nelson. I don't know if they've had a conversation. I don't know if he even knows if he was familiar with Jordy's game at all. But I was sitting this past week in the locker room, and I was thinking a lot about the way Christian carries himself. And in this game, we care so much about yards and touchdowns and production I think sometimes we overlook what someone brings to the table in the locker room and as far as a culture is concerned. And the longer I cover this team, the more respect you kind of gain for players like Christian Watson and obviously Jordy when he was here where it is team first. And obviously last Sunday, that was Christian's day. Four catches, a career high, 150 receiving yards. But it isn't just about that. It's about what he does Monday through Friday and how he keeps that team together. 
I think a lot more needs to be said and on my part written about kind of the leadership value that he brings because for such a young man, he is really wise and mature beyond his years. Guys, the 49ers are just five and five, but let's take a deeper dive into that. Those five losses come by a total of 23 points. If my math is correct, that's an average of 4.6 points per loss. These guys are going to be a tough customer. They rank second in offense, sixth in defense, and all I hear is about all the guys they've lost and all the injuries they've sustained. They're still playing pretty darn good football. So my message for this week is simply don't underestimate the 49ers. They're going to be a tough customer. I know the guys in the locker room will not underestimate them. And that's three guys with three things. See you next time. Grab a little danger they both crave when they put on a show. She likes when he takes control. to do was make the whole crowd bounce y'all bounce y'all bounce y'all bounce y'all bounce y'all the packers met the defending super bowl champion 49ers in the regular season on november 19th 1989. the packers were the underdog but they didn't play like it the defense sacked joe montana six times and forced four turnovers Don Mikowski rushed for two touchdowns, including the game winner in the fourth quarter, as the Packers pull off the upset 21-17. Memorable Moments, brought to you by the Oneida Casino.